Tuesday here on the show. I said it before, I'll say it again, you know what that means. We gotta talk about Raw. Should I just get it over with? Ugh. This disaster. So it opens up with the Battle Royal to determine the number one contenders, but actually it doesn't. It opens up with all the geeks in the ring, and then Orton and Riddle are the only two to get an entrance, and they come out, and then AJ and Omos come out, and AJ rambles and rambles and rambles on the mic. Then the Miz comes out in a wheelchair, and for some reason he's got this thing here that you squeeze and it goes, meep, meep. I'm like, are you kidding me? And he says that he's hurt, but Morrison is going to wrestle in the match on his behalf. In a match where if Morrison wins, the winners get a tag title shot, which then Miz can't wrestle for because he's hurt. Lindsay Dorado is in the ring. They say his partner is hurt. So what's he in the ring for? If he wins, they can't get a tag match if his friend's hurt. So anyway, we're off to the races. 15 minutes of nothing but talking and rambling. I was done. Like, at the beginning of the show. This almost, almost was worse than the main event segment. And I will say that because if you were watching the main event segment and you were disgusted, you turned it off, but you'd already watched almost three hours of the show. This was so bad, I wanted to turn it off like 10 minutes in. I was just done with the show. So they do the match, and the Viking Raiders win. So they will be number one contenders to the tag titles. Riddle, who is a babyface, got eliminated, but then came back in to help eliminate Kofi, who also is a babyface. And that set up a match for later on. What a great guy. We had a Charlotte segment where they announced it was going to be Charlotte and Rhea against Nikki Cross and a partner of her choosing. They are pushing that Nikki is on a winning streak. Because they think you, I almost swore, are an absolute moron. We have the Viking Raiders all excited and almost and Styles come up and they're eating turkey legs and the Viking Raiders don't do anything about it, so they're dorks. Elias is in the ring, and uh, they do a match with Jackson Riker. Jackson Riker is a baby face now. The most generic-looking baby face. He's cut his hair now, so he just looks like an action figure. He works like an action figure. They do this match, and three minutes of my life wasted for a count-out finish when Elias just runs away. And then the announcers go, oh, don't worry, this one's far from over. <laughs> oh, I was worried. Actually, I was worried, and it didn't make me feel better when you told me that there's much more to come. We had a contract signing with uh, Drew and Lashley where uh, Drew tells a long story because the show's three hours. We've got to burn some time. And then Lashley comes out. And long story short, the agreement is they will wrestle at Hell in a Cell. And if Drew McIntyre does not win, he will never get a shot at the title as long as Lashley is the champion. Drew wanted this match because he didn't want interference. So he chose a cage match, which, you know, I don't want to get on the guy because that's that's what you should say. That's logical, one would think. But in WWE, show me the last cage match where there was not interference. I, I can't even think of one. I mean, we're talking about one on SmackDown just a few days ago where literally it was like Jimmy Uso ran in in the middle of a Hell in a Cell match. They're reminding of this on SmackDown and then announcing a match on Raw that's a Hell in a Cell so nobody can run in. Why is this so hard? And we had a Nikki Cross promo, and her partner's going to be Asuka. Then we had Sheamus doing commentary for Ricochet and Umberto Carrillo. Ricochet and Umberto Carrillo are having a match where the winner will get Sheamus, whose nose is broken, and he's doing commentary. So, of all the matches to not have interference, these two poor blokes wrestle, they do a spot off the apron, and they can't make it back into the ring. They're both counted out. They're both losers. Nobody cost them the match. Nobody caused them to get counted out. It was their own fault. Sheamus on commentary laughs at them for being losers, which they are. And somehow this is supposed to make me want to see either of them against Sheamus. That's the story of the show, by the way. A bunch of storylines that make me less interested in all of these matches. That's pretty impressive that they can do it in multiple segments. We had an MVP Kofi Kingston promo, which was great. MVP is trying to recruit Kofi Kingston, and he's given him a lot of stuff to talk about. I, I can't do it justice. Both guys, Kofi's really good in this in this talking thing, and so is MVP. And the two of them were they were great. Eva Marie's coming back next week. They've done months of vignettes of her being a 
empowering woman trying to convince other women that you can do it and you can succeed and we all have failures but you can overcome them she's coming back as a heel Mansoor is backstage Mustafa Ali's trying to recruit him a lot of recruitment going on here it's like an AEW show Jeff Hardy versus Cedric Alexander. They're doing that big thing with Cedric, and he just goes in here and loses in five minutes clean to Jeff Hardy via Swanton Bomb. Great. We have Nikki and Asuka versus Rhea and Charlotte. And the good news is, the story is that Rhea and Charlotte can't get along. And as far as their performance in being unable to get along, they did a good job. Problem is, it was a 13-minute match, and so on minimum 13 different occasions, they could not get along. It's your typical WWE complete and total overkill. I got it. They don't like each other. 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 They don't like... Are you bored yet? Well, imagine that for 13 minutes! And then... Charlotte just turns on Rhea. She gives Rhea her finish. Nikki Cross pins Rhea, even though she didn't do anything. And then Nikki celebrates like she got a win. And the answers go, oh, what a win streak this Nikki Cross is on. Three straight weeks, she's done nothing to earn a win. And they're actually pushing it like she's on a winning streak. Mansoor beat Drew Gulak. Kofi Kingston beat Riddle. So... Uh, I don't even need to go to it. The point of this is they had an easy finish. They screwed it up anyway, and they told some story here. I could talk about it later if you care, but the match was good. The finish was stupid. And then, of course, it's the main event. It's Alexa's Playground with Shayna Baszler. Alexa is in a swing set with a doll acting like she's 12. Shayna Baszler, the Queen of Spades, mixed martial arts fighter. She's walking to the ring, and the three grown men at the booth have to go, I got a really bad feeling about this. I'm very worried about Shayna. So Shayna gets in the ring. Alexa says, you got to apologize to my doll. Shayna says, your doll sucks. Alexa says, no, you seriously, seriously, you got to apologize to this doll. Shayna says, your doll's stupid. She throws a doll on the ground. Alexa attacks her. Shayna throws her out of the ring. Shayna stomps on the doll. And then the lights start to flicker. So, we got a new level of magic here, everybody. Normally, the magic is, like, Alexa disappears, or uh, the lights go off, and she's in a different schoolgirl outfit, or a scary outfit, or whatever. This time, Shayna goes backstage, and Alexa has caused every wrestler on the roster, every production member, everybody in the building has vanished. There's nobody in the building. They're all gone. They vanished. Shayna's back there, and... Oh, the lights are flickering, and they go dark, and Shane has to act scared and convince herself that it's only a stupid doll, and then she locks herself in this room because she's scared of a doll, and she looks in the mirror, and there's the doll, which, by the way, straight out of WCW, we can see the doll in the mirror, but then the camera pans to the side, and the doll's not there. So now, Shane is nuts, and we're nuts! So Shayna's all scared. She looks back in the mirror. There's a doll again. Oh, she's all scared. And then the lights go out and she goes, ah, and the show goes off the air. Trash. Absolute trash. I was disgusted. Dave watched it twice. I said, why would you watch this twice? He goes, I couldn't believe my eyes. I'm thinking, are you blind? I watched it. What could you have watched and not believed? That's what happened. Shayna's scared of a doll. She's backstage. The lights go out. Then I had to read some bloke saying maybe they can save this somehow with the follow-up next week. No! There's no way to follow... There's no way to save this except to axe it from television. Where's The Fiend, by the way? Fiend's doing all this stuff, and, like, it's horrible, and everyone thinks it sucks. And so they take The Fiend off television. But now we gotta watch Alexa doing the same stuff! What's today? Today's the 8th. They go back to live shows in five weeks. It's a five-week countdown. That, I'm looking f- more forward to what happens in five weeks when fans watch this trash than any pay-per-view they've done, maybe ever. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Oh, and it's a mess tonight. It's oh, big, good, good, good. Big, big mess. Uh-huh. I've got so much junk here, I don't know what I'm doing. Brian versus Reigns. 
That was WrestleMania 6, 1990. No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it was not at all. Warrior versus Hogan. No, how fitting. Both very tan. <laughs> Start I'll out. Say. I've been laughing at myself on the show. I don't know if I'm laughing at myself or with myself. Who cares? Or... You're laughing. Yes. Well, it's What kinda... difference does it make? Well, it makes me feel kind of stupid. No. <laughs> what? Like Come I'm doing now. something dumb. Granny, do you personally agree that Brian is on the genius level of intelligence? Of course I am. I don't think so. <laughs> Why? Not how, what evidence, not how I what evidence do you have, Granny, that I'm not a genius? Oh, I've got Besides lots. the first uh, ten minutes of this show. We used to do the twist and the polka and the hip-hop and uh, there was one Excuse other me, one the hip-hop? <laughs> yeah, hip-hop. Really? That's what Granny the, did hip-hop. Huh. Yeah. You learn something new every day. No, I don't. Sounds like you're a grandmaster instead I of a grandmother. My phone's ringing. Can't, you don't say. I, <laughs> who's calling? I'll just let it ring. I will wait. Yeah. It's probably my brother. It doesn't say on the screen who's calling. I haven't looked. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.